Hey everybody, we are back for our fourth and final part of Dicing with Death today. Ryan, take it away. Yeah, so Qualnir is in the village of Javas, just narrowly survived a close battle with a yeah, a band of sea zombies, or river zombies as the case may be, mm -hmm. led by the late great Solomon the Cruel. Uh, Qualnir is actually unconscious. Uh, Michelle and a few villagers are the only survivors of this battle. Um, it'll take at least two days before <coughs> Qualnir can wake up unless Michelle has some way to intervene. No, she will hang out the villagers and be their leader for two days if they will permit her. Which, 17 charisma, cast magic, red feather coat. She, I'm pretty sure she can take charge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they have... They try to talk her into putting her feather dress back on. Mm, nah, she won't do it unless she feels like she's losing control of the town. No, no, they listen no matter what, but they would have appreciated it. Um, have her roll an intelligence check. D20 plus 13, 23. So she will be a. She'll figure out over the course of the next day that um, the witch doctor um, has more healing ointments oh, yeah. and potions. You mostly drink them dry, but she is able to wrangle up a single healing potion and then some in progress green pasty things that she's kind of hesitant to use because she's not sure what state of the manufacturing process they're in. Now, Qualnir would have no qualms taking this. And yeah, how do you think, Mich who do you think Michelle will give the healing to? To be honest, I think Michelle would give the healing to the holy man and then ask him to attend to Qualnir. Qualnir would take it, give it to Michelle and peace out immediately. Is there a third option? The third option is not to take it at all. <laughs> yeah, she finds this in his hut so at some point during the next day, looking for anything that can can help. Would Michelle actually take it and use it? I don't know. I'm not sure. She seems to be on the up and up about most things. If she, if it, if to her it looks like Qualnir will recover on his own, and the wizard will recover on his own fairly soon, I Roll think she's gonna leave. Two it. more intelligence checks. First for Qualnir, next for the for the wizard. Twenty three, twenty three. Yeah, she knows what you know about Qualmire out of character. He's a day or two away from being back on his, or from regaining consciousness. Okay, she um, will continue he, to tend to him then. Uh, roll not. one more for the for the other guy. Uh, twenty-three, twenty-three. They were both. Oh, both twenty-threes. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. So Qualmire is making a recovery. The holy man is about the same. The wounds are about the same. But he doesn't seem to be doing as as well. He seems she, th she well. thinks so. She thinks he'll regain consciousness in a few days. But he doesn't. I'll leave it at he doesn't seem to be faring as well for now. Okay. Uh, if she looks like if he looks like he's going to regain consciousness, she will chill and leave the healing potion where it is. Actually, and not touch it. Uh, she not even take it. She leaves it in his hut. I think she would leave it in her his hut. Maybe that's yeah. my projection. Maybe Michelle's not that nice. I, I mean, she's your she's your NPC. All right, at I guess point. I'll only intervene unless you do something that I find grievously offensive. Okay, yeah, she's gonna leave it in the hut. Yeah. Um. So shall we fast forward a few days? Please do. Yeah. So nothing really eventful happens. The villagers, actually, mo most of Michelle gets shit running again. Um. Occasionally she gives commands, but mostly she's just there for morale to get the village moving again. Mm -hmm. reassure everyone that it's okay but they you know try to rebuild i mean not much progress is made in a couple of days but try to keep some semblance of normalcy get rid of the absurd bonfire in the center of town take down all the tents and start you know grouping together to you know reassemble houses for those that lost them or Try and get the zombie stench out of those that were taken by the river for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. More than for probably months. Okay. <clears throat> and then eventually, uh, let me... So you, everyone's just healing naturally, aren't they? 
So I'm going to roll for the holy man. You roll you roll d10s for yourself, right, each day? Right. Yeah, yeah. So keep start rolling some d10s. D10. Qualnir, first day actually loses an HP. Holy shit. Oh, shit. Uh, he was at negative two, so now he's at negative three. Then he gains one. He gains one. He's at one. So how many? So it was that th one, two? Four days. Four days. Yeah, four days Qualnir recover, uh, wakes up. Well, at four days, he's at zero HP, you know, semi away. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Man actually wakes up a day before. Okay. Um, he regains consciousness, uh, but he does not look like he's doing well. He's very pale okay. um, and sickly. Uh, but he does immediately volunteer his healing potion to Qualnir. Like he remembers it and goes to get it and feeds it to you. Uh, actually, you roll 2d4 plus whatever. <laughs> Uh, 2d4 plus 2? Yeah, I think so. Two four. 6 HPs. So you are at 5? Yes. Uh, he tells you it is his last one. Uh, it's all the healing he has for until he can manufacture some more. Uh, you, you look at him and you're not sure if he'll live long enough to <laughs> manufacture anymore. How are you doing? What, you look sickly and about to die. Oh, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Okay, I've been cool. on death's doorstep before. Awesome. I won't sweat about you then. At this point, Michelle would tell Qualnir about the Solomon body. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They're both your characters. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Qualnir goes over to... Uh, think she would share. Rip him to shreds, basically. Qualnir is curious about this guy. Roll a uh, save versus poison as you enter this abandoned hut. 13 is a pass. Okay. So, it. I mean, it's it's... Smells like rotting fish and rotting flesh and moldy, moldy pants, moldy, moldy robes, pants. Oh. moldy robes. Yeah. Um, but you tear him to shreds. Uh, you find that his most uh, there's a lot of belongings dangling off of his body. Mm -hmm. It is as if he was. Yeah, I mean, he went into death with way more with, with most of his loot. Okay. Um, tied around his uh, hands are actually the remains of ropes hmm. that have been broken. Um, there are several bags. There's a backpack. Um, you remove the robe and you find a set of uh, a bracer and a vembrace still hmm. clinging to his bloated arms. Oh. I think... Well, shit, it's a little bit late. Um, I, in retrospect, Michelle had Detect Magic memorized and would have cast that on his body, but whatever, she can do it today. Okay. Yeah. Michelle will come in and, and do a Detect Magic and point out magical things for Qualnir to pick up. Yeah, so uh, roll a save versus poison for her. For her? Okay. Yeah. 18, Pash. Yeah. So she comes and investigates. Uh, the vem the set of it's a it's a bracer vem brace. They're both magical, and she bracer tells you they they are linked by the same aura. Bracer vem brace. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, you can decide what to do with those after you finish the looting. I'm I don't think there's anything else magical. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, any wealth? Uh, rotten. Oh, uh, yes, there is wealth. Uh, so I guess I'll start with the highlights. There is a uh, coin purse hanging from the belt uh, and with that has 63 GP, 71 silver. Whoa, whoa hold on, a little slower, a little slower. 63 GP? 63 GP, 71 okay. silver, 3 copper. I ignore the copper. No, I'll, I'll um, there is also a backpack. There are various uh, rusted weapons Ignore them all. Rusted, rusted daggers. Yeah. Hidden under the hidden under the robes. Rotten clothes. A hammer. I don't know why there's a hammer. There's a rusted hammer too. And then a backpack, which I assume you go inside. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually one dagger that is not rusted. It wasn't magical, uh, but it is uh, still shiny. I'll pick that up. 
and inspect it more closely. Is it made out of iron, metal, steel? Considering it didn't rust, you're doubting it's made yeah. of steel. Um, you can have Michelle look at it. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and roll. I'll give her the same identify chance she usually has. Okay. So let me roll that. No, she's not able to figure out why it is. She said it didn't show up on her detect magic spell. <clears throat> but she's not sure what caused it to resist the the river's embrace. Uh, there's that brass beetle amulet. Non-magical around the neck. Yeah. Any interest? Leave nope. it. Um, a few things that rotted in the backpack. Oh, there's a potion vial, but it has been spoiled with river water. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Um, buried at the bottom of the backpack are seven garnets l- jingling loose around the bag. Nice. Some spoiled parchment, spoiled seven torches. Garnets. Spoiled ink vials and four stone figurines. Think like little chess pieces. Only they're, you know, one's a jaguar, one's a beetle. Right, right. One's a, I don't know. We have no interest in One's a monkey. Things. Unless they're made of like a precious material, we have no interest in them. I mean, you, you can appraise them if you'd like. Sure, I will appraise them and the, the garnets. Yeah, I'll start with the garnets. Start with the garnets. My appraisal check is 12. Who oh, garnets are worth 100 GP each. Okay. Um, the stone carvings uh, are also were actually. Let me let another roll. We got that DMG. We got time. We got time for some random tables. Mm. Uh, Objects of art. Oops. You know what? I'm um, still. Oh, go ahead. All right, they are worth uh, 300 GP each. You, I mean, if you could find an appropriate collector, 300 GP each. You almost, you think you might be able to get more for the set of four, if okay. you could find someone who can fork up, you know. 2,000 gold for a set of these jade figurines. 300 GP each? 300 GP each, or, yeah, or, like I, or, yeah, more for the set if they are, if you can find someone with a deep enough pockets who's interested. Okay. Now, there's a little bit more um, uh, note taking or upkeep that we got to do here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I had all those gems that I stole from Lady What's Her Face. Mm-hmm. And I, I failed to identify the. the Have cost you leveled of two since of them. then? I've leveled since then, so I'd like to go back. The ones that are it was How seven, m- eight, nine, uh, seven, eight, nine, three, three, or something like that. It's the eight and the nine, which I've missed. So I have eight, nine. Yeah, okay, I have stars next to the ones you missed. So I'll roll again. Uh, the eight is worth five hundred each. The nine is worth fifty each. And I also have one gem from way long ago, way long ago that I missed. Um, I don't have it written down. So I'm gonna and I have it. another gem that just has gem slash question mark that I don't know where I picked that up. All right, uh, you get reads on both of those. So let me roll. First one is worth 500. Second is worth 10. Okay. Okay. I've got a serious amount of wealth here. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm just going to do a quick tally of my wealth. Plus 700, plus 1600, plus 400, plus 80, plus 800, plus 30. No, sorry, 300 plus 500 plus 50. Wait, that was 500 each and 50 each for the 8 and 9? Uh, 8 and 9 were 550. Yes, 500 correct. each, though, right? 500 each, 50 each. 3, 4, 5, 6, 
six, seven, eight. Uh, nine times fifty is what? Four hundred and fifty. Yeah. Plus three hundred. Plus three hundred. Plus ten. Plus seven hundred. Yep. And you plus, already got experience for all of this, except yeah. for the latest round. Twelve hundred. So not including the two pound ruby or the tosseloy rubies. Two pound. You have two pounds of ruby. Oh, two or. pounds of rubies or the two <clears throat> tosseloy rubies. I have fourteen thousand gold in gems and jewelry. Something like that. Yeah, fourteen thousand. It's not always as easy to con. I mean, you can't convert. Of course, of course, but that's ballparking it, you know. On top of that, plus the seven hundred plat I have. That's another or seventy plat is another seven hundred gold, plus sixty four gold plus eight gold and silver. So roughly speaking, I have fifteen hundred gold. I'm sorry, fifteen thousand gold that I can invest in something if I need to. It's a lot yeah. of money. It's a lot of wealth, and it's. I'm getting a little bit nervous carrying it all around on me. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you're getting towards the point in your, you know, the character progression where you start to start to be able to think about settling down, set yourself up for retirement, found your own thieves guild, or build a hideaway somewhere. But I got to go to a big city to do that. I don't want to have a shitty thieves guild in Cinturon. What a waste of time. Hmm. Um. So why don't we do? Do you want to do some experience? experience? Yeah. 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 Why don't we just do some experience and then we can spend the last half hour or whatever tidying up. Yeah, yeah. We'll get ourselves prepped for the next week. Yeah. So each of the four fallen sea zombies is 420. So we're at four times 420. Four times 420. Mm-hmm. Um, for slaying Solomon, looting his corpse and freeing the village of Javis from the oppression of the of the the mists uh, you gain 2000 experience does that get divided between my two characters that will get divided between the two I think, and i think that was all we dealt with today correct yeah yeah unless you want to give me or take away experience for getting drunk <laughs> i think that's no, that's fine okay. i mean that's Irrelevant. Okay. Um, does Michelle have? She doesn't have her prime requisites. No. She does not. So you divide it in half. You give yourself ten percent bonus. You right. get her straight up. So Michelle gets eighteen forty. Okay, and Qualnir gets twenty twenty four, bringing him to forty three six three six. Okay. And then she has a total of 89.70. Whoops. Cannot write. 89.70. Cool. Uh, she is close. She's 1,030 away from leveling. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then you've got these magic bem braces. Mm-hmm. Magic bracers marked with the symbol of a sun and a moon. I guess I want to spend a couple of days kind of investigating them, see how they work. Do they work in conjunction with my dwarven elven chain mail? Um, Roll an intelligence check. So you put them on. I put them on and, you know, Michelle and I spar for a while. They they fit nicely. They are pretty snuggly. Uh, 15 for Qualnir's intelligence check. No. Do you let do you have Michelle wear them, or do you wear them only yourself? Yeah, Qualner gets upset and throws them at Michelle. You wear have, these. They're have stupid. Michelle roll. I'll roll an intelligence one. check. Yeah. D twenty plus thirteen twenty five. Um, they seem to be serving her quite well. They increase her armor class by several. <laughs> okay. If you keep if she wears them, I'll tell you exactly what it is. But they they do appear to give her a benefit. Even on top of not her when armor. she's wearing not when she's wearing armor. Okay. Um, so yeah, she suggests that if she's to be spell casting, this seems like the way to go. Absolutely. Qualnir agrees with her a hundred percent. And it they... seems like the armor does offer more protection. Okay. But that's fine. 
Uh, she will give her armor to someone in town, then. It's not worth hauling around 20 pounds She's of gear. hesitant to do that, unless okay. you think she's close to encumbrance. No. I mean, the, the armor was, it was just, it's just a nice-ass suit of armor, and it's pretty Oh, light. it's, okay. Yeah, I do like the... I mean, custom-built, it, it was worth like 170 gold brand oh, new. Oh, okay, I thought it was just like shitty, crappy no. armor that... No, 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 it's like a, it's a fit suit of armor, and okay. it's, and it's a very expensive type of armor. Okay. I don't think she's near. I mean, she was un, she was unencumbered, I believe. Yeah. So there's no reason to ditch it unless. Okay. Cool. She'll hold on. Provide to it. one. That's fine. That's fine. So she can just you know. She is strap it to her backpack. Yeah, she's lightly encumbered at the moment. Was she to begin with with the armor or? Yeah, maybe with she the armor was. she was lightly okay. encumbered. Okay. That's so fine. was Quan there though, wasn't he? No. No. Nope. So you can just. I mean, she'll leave her back. She leaves her backpack and her harp when she charges into battle or whatever. Right. Right. Okay. Even yeah. yeah. So, Qualnir and Michelle sit down, and they have a chat. And Qualnir says, "I want to go to a city. I'm tired of these fucking jungles. Before we get to a city, I want to go back to that ruby mine and loot it for everything it's worth. And we should take the profits from that. Go to a city, set ourselves up something nice. Um, what's her name? Ice Iris." basically ditched us. If we ever find her, we should probably put a knife through her because she ran away and she could be spilling our secrets for money. I don't trust her. I need to get out of town. Alright, yeah. Um, uh, if you Michelle... want, we can role play and encounter back and forth, but Michelle basically agrees. Yeah. Uh, she, I mean, she was the, she suggested staying in Solstice to begin with. Yeah. So she was a little surprised by this detour. Um, She's hesitant to visit the ruby mine on the way back, but if you insist, she'll follow. Colner's going to insist. Uh, but he asks her opinion on the cities in the region, since he is still kind of a stranger to these parts. Uh, from Seagate, which I don't think either of them are really looking to go back to right now, what big towns or cities would be around here? Yeah, so she says the west is basically unclaimed wilderness. Um, Cinturon is the trade hub, and then from there you've, you've got to rough it. To get anywhere, okay. I, mean, I mean, it's just it's un, it's un, partially, yeah, unexplored jungle as far as that's concerned. Um, she is partial to Solstice because of the library. Um, she and for I mean, there are there's obviously Fainir, the Elfwood, a little bit south of there. Um, inland from there, there is I mean, there's other stuff inland. Um, much of it is not big city okay so the big cities are and really then she's Solstice never and seagate and brinton yeah uh she's never been further north than solstice so she can't tell you what's up there what's the population of solstice roughly um 10,000 maybe Okay, so it is a pretty big place. There's a lot going on there. Yeah, and it's yeah. Uh, so there's yeah, and even outside of the city limits, it's 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 well supported by its countryside or whatever. All right. So you know yeah. what? Let's head back to Solstice then. Maybe that place. Maybe I was just misjudging it because of the map, and I thought there was like the library and the towers, and that was it. And I wasn't. Well, that's basically that's all. That's that's all that's in the city limits of Solstice. But I mean, like like I said, there's but it's a big enough town. There's farmland surrounding. It's a hustling and bustling port city, right? And there's there's like enough people there that there would be perhaps like a you know a jeweler and a goldsmith. Oh, and, yeah, any merchant you would want, and uh, yeah. you found it much more well stocked than even Seagate. Okay, cool. I think I was just getting the Seagate map was bigger and more it had like looked like all the buildings were smaller. It looked Seagate like was, was probably more bigger. Seagate. I mean, it was a more impressive castle. Okay. But just the way it was run, I mean, it didn't. I mean, it's not the kind of place you can. I mean, it did not have a healthy economy. Okay. All right. I mean, we'll we'll go back a, to Solstice. It was a feudal, a feudal castle, basically, whereas Solstice is this. I think we're yeah, going to go relatively to, egalitarian society. I think we're going to go to Solstice. Thriving middle class and set up like a, a business front, buy, like buy a house, set up a business front set up some traps, kind of like create a lair, and use Solstice as our base of operations. I've never really... 
taken root in a city and just hung out in a city and like made it my own. But I think mm -hmm. Qualnir and Michelle are going to try and conquer Solstice from within using yeah. guile, cunning, and wealth, and a, a few assassinations where needed. Apparent, yeah. Apparently, Qualnir's first impression of Solstice wasn't good, but Michelle is certainly behind this plan. Like I said, she she's fallen in love with Solstice. She should fall in love with Qualnir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, one day maybe. So yeah, you can probably. dream about ruling Solstice, but for now you're at only a couple HP in this backwards ass jungle village. Mm -hmm. While everyone around you's dying from off eating too much jungle meat. Yeah. Too much Ebola infected jungle meat. You know what? You're right, Michelle. Let's leave the ruby mine alone. There will come a time to loot the ruby mine. Yeah, probably she tells not. you it's only been a few weeks. You know, you're they probably hardly mind anything. I, I want to take a on Steven. I asked the local got more villagers. wealth than you can handle. Yeah, I asked the local villagers if we could. What is north of Yavis? Like, what there are there are some slave traders up there. I've heard about. How far away are they? Can, are they walking distance? Will I be in danger if I try and get to them? Roll the charisma check. Nineteen. Uh, the villagers act are actually resistant to talk about this subject to you. And you are unable to get any of them to open up. They feign ignorance, I guess. Like, they don't, they don't an you tell, ask about the slaver's village and they, like, pretend like it doesn't exist. But you can tell that they know something. But they're not telling anything to you. Right. All right. <clears throat> um, they do, gets I mean, stick in, is just kind of, you know, unhappy about it. So he will not even ha ask Michelle to ask, because I know that she could get it. They love Michelle here. But he just says, fuck it. Come on, Michelle, we're going to head north, see what we can find. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, how do you head north? I assume you do this during the day? During the is, day. Is this like the first thing you do when you wake up? I mean, no, you're feeling like, okay. this is two like a day later, the next day. Okay. Uh, so you do regain an HP at six, I believe? Yes, sir. Uh, now that the witch, actually, I guess the witch doctor woke up right before you. Mm-hmm. So, you, I mean, but Michelle will notice the difference. I mean, now that he's up, he's rallying the town better than she did. Not okay. that he's any, not, he's nowhere near as charismatic, but. But they know, you know him it's, better. It's his village. Yeah. Um, so he's got them rebuilding. Using his 18 100 strength to move trees and build houses. Um, so, how do you head north? Along the uh, river? We walk the jungle? along the river, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, nice pleasant stroll along the river, the sound of life all around you. It's hard to imagine that, you know, just a couple of nights ago, this shoreline was just getting ravaged by zombies. Um, within 20, 30 minutes, maybe a little more, because, you know, you pause because Michelle gets her boot stuck in the mud. Slow going. Um, but you come into view of a camp right along the river. Mm -hmm. Like I said, just 20 minutes north of Yavis. Um, it's, uh, there's a palisade wall and within you can, I mean, it's a short wall. You can see over it and see some tents set up within the wall. Okay. Uh, do, is there anyone walking about or moving about at all? Uh, you are sort of approaching from the side. Mm-hmm. I can't, but I see no no movement in town, in the in the collection of tents and stuff. No, you can just see the top of the tents, so a, a person is would be concealed. Okay, um, I call out, "Hello, is anyone here?" and start walking into the tent, uh, into the tented area. Um, so the, there's a wall impeding your path. Do you circle around the palisade? I will circle around the palisade. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you approach from, I guess, like the northeast. Okay. Uh, these slavers are actually closer to J Yavis, but I can't fit all this text. We can't see it either. Ooh, okay. It's just a small camp. Like, three large pavilion tents surrounded by a palisade wall. Um, you find the front entrance. There are two armed guards. Uh, 
You just mis- mismatched. One's got a sword. One's got a spear. They've got oh. piecemeal armor. What's your business? I'm coming for information. <laughs> we don't sell information. He looks you up and down. Looks Michelle up and down. And then looks her up and down again. Why not? Do you have the information I'm looking for? A couple of gnolls came through here a few weeks ago looking to buy some slaves. I want to know how many they bought. I'll pay for we it. We don't sell slaves here. What are you talking about? He gives you a wink and nods you to pass on in. I walk on in. I look um, for the biggest so tent. A, uh, um, I don't think you necessarily need to. I mean, so there's three large tents. Uh, it seems to be a population of roughly a couple of dozen uh armed warrior types and then maybe twice that in slaves okay the slave uh yeah um so the, i mean they're out in the open for all to see chained up um in the center of camp there is a gathering and it's pretty clear to see who their leader is okay i, I go towards the leader and signal to him that i wish to speak to him Yes, I don't remember how I described him before. Uh, yeah. Perhaps this is now his second in command. A tall, slender man uh, with a patchy beard. It's tough to get a good shave in the jungle. Yeah, that's a good point. Wearing studded leather. He's got a mace dangling from his side. I wave at him. Uh, whip Thank tied you. around where his belt would be. I'm looking for some information. A few gnolls came through here. Technically a knoll and a flynn, but who's counting? Fucking knolls, I tell ya. Yeah, I know. They paid, they paid, but those boys are always trouble. Well, I'm here asking how many slaves they bought. Or, you know, how much manpower they acquired. Mm, that's the only reason I deal business with them. Lazy bastards won't do any of their own work. Yeah. I, I sold them uh, 20 head. 20 head? How many heads did they buy? 20 heads. Oh, they bought 20 heads? No, I don't I don't deal in two-headed slaves, unfortunately. If you got a connection. Uh, hey, if I find one, I'll give it to you. Um, by the way, do you... Do you deal in anything else other than flesh? Maybe. What you looking for? Let's just say I'm setting up a trading outpost in Solstice. And uh, it might be nice to have some business connections that I can trade with occasionally. I doubt so I'll be coming. a long way off. Yeah, I won't be coming away. I won't be coming away with any flesh from this. Probably not, at least. Um, but if you're ever in Solstice and need a friend, my name is Qualnir. There's an Qualnir, unmarked. What makes you think I would want to be your friend? Are you here to buy or not? I'm here to buy information, and you've already told me what I need, so here's ten gold, and I grab ten gold and toss it to him. All right, Quilnia, we're good. Yeah, if you're in Solstice, <clears throat> look me up. There might be some things we can do together. I will not be anywhere near Solstice. I didn't think so. <laughs> I give him a nod, and we head back to Yavis, and I'm going to try and persuade some of the Yavis people to get us to Cinturon. They are more than happy to give you a fr- give you free transport back to Cinturon. Excellent, and then I'll you save their lives. Oh yeah, and then passage from Cinturon to Solstice. You'll have to arrange that once you get to Cinturon. Right. But you can catch a boat. I mean, you can convince them to leave by a boat from Javis whenever you please. Okay. Yeah, well, I, we want to go a- ASAP. All right, even if it means being on the river at night. Oh, I mean, there's no you can't do Javis to Cinturon in one night. No, but you can do Yavis to the falls in one day. At this point, it'll probably the sun will set. Oh, well, then we'll go tomorrow. We'll go okay. uh, and then do the falls in the day and then do whatever. Okay. All right. You leave first thing the next morning. Uh, the night passes probably uneventfully, but you never know in the jungle. Uneventfully. And the next morning, you depart. Make it to the falls by midday. Those fucking tigers. There's another tiger. In the South Bank. And you actually Fucking see tigers, a few man. you see a few toss loy swinging from tree to tree. 
Oh, if they get anywhere near... Oh, I already threw three darts. If they no. get within dart range, I'm just going to fucking hurl darts at them. I don't even care if I kill them, uh, I just want to inflict damage. You lose, you lose three darts and hit... I mean, make some attack rolls, but you probably hit nothing. At uh, what range are they? They're at medium range. So what is that? Two. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but they're at medium range. <laughs> D20 minus... Uh, no, plus three. Oh, God. Plus three. One, two, three. 2014, 22. Actually. Uh, roll two hits. Uh, same guy, I assume? Two damage. Oh, shit. Total? Total. One and one. Nope. Not enough to fell a creature. And Doesn't they matter. To the trees. Fuck and it. you never see them again. Yeah. Send this trip. All right, your crew lowers your boat down the falls, mm -hmm. and you pick up pace. Continue moving. Is Michelle doing any studying on this journey, or are you letting her? Uh, I will let her continue to study. Did, it, was she down any HP, or did she not? No, get she didn't take zombie? any damage. Has she read through the entire spellbook? Like, does she know all the spells that are in the spellbook? Uh, yeah, I told them to you. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. I want to make sure I understand that's, the situation. That's the spell book. Um, I think you tried everything you really wanted, so you're yeah. probably waiting for a level up to get invisibility again. Yeah. Get a chance at invisibility. I'm considering blur or mirror image, just not ready to commit to it yet. Those are only those can only be cast on herself. Although now that she's got bracers and is not using armor and can cast spells in combat, it can be pretty nice. Yeah. Because Bracers plus Blur, I think Blur gives you a bonus of 2 to your AC or something. Yeah. Um, that would be nice. That would make her pretty good. But she just doesn't have enough... Con like, she's not close quarters enough to need it. So I'm holding off. Yeah. And she can learn to use any weapon. Of course. So if you can get her training with the weapon of your choice. She can't use shields, but some I sick two-handed sword. To, <laughs> I think when we get to... Um, doesn't seem like her character, but it's it's certainly possible. But she could, no, she's a bard. She can't use any weapon. Bards can wield any weapon. That is verbatim from the player's handbook. Any weapon, any armor, but not shields. Interesting. I might actually equip her with a a broadsword. She's probably better off with a two-hander, like a bastard sword. Yeah, but Xena used a broadsword. <laughs> That's what I was going with. Yeah. And I mean, that leaves her other hand free for various shenanigans, for spell casting. Yeah. I mean, technically, yeah, a long sword and a bastard sword are literally the same weapon, except the bastard sword has, like, you can use it two handed instead of one hand. If like, you noticed in 5th edition, they changed that. There is no bastard sword. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Long sword is versatile, and you can, it's basically a bastard sword. Yeah. And I mean, historically, Dungeons and Dragons sort of got what. Oh, they fucked it up bastard. so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, bastard sword, broadsword, longsword, they're all just colloquial names for the same shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and this was also written in the late 80s, so... Yeah, before the, Wikipedia. <laughs> before they could properly do their research. And in fact, it's kind of impressive that they were able to yeah. research it as thoroughly as they were with just so. libraries. These books are <laughs> older than most of our audience. They're older than me. Oh, they are? Or, no, 89. Well, 89. 89. I mean, they're as That's, old as me, depending yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, they were probably published, I don't know what month, but I think I think they're older than me. Oh my god, really? Do I have a first publication of this book here? No, we have the revised editions. The first publications were very different. Yeah, okay. Second printing, 96 is my book. Yeah, but the second printing of the yeah. revised second 89 edition. 89 was the first. I don't know what month in 89. It's probably on the internet somewhere. It's probably on the internet somewhere. <laughs> January 1989. So these... The second edition is older than me by a couple of months. By a couple of months. Yeah, because the original printing of the revised edition was in 95. 96, my book said, but who knows. Oh. Whatever. Cool. Anyways. All right. Um, so you make it back to Cinturon in, another day, in a day and a half. Mm -hmm. Late afternoon, you arrive in Cinturon. Um, you procure a ship back to Solstice? I would like to. Yeah, you've done this before. You're able to, I mean, you know how to, you, know, you go down to the docks, you ask around the, you know, the merchant vessels who's making a trip to Solstice. There's usually a couple, you find one you can deal with, you end up paying uh, eight gold for a cabin back to 
I think <clears throat> I forgot to pay for my trip out here. Okay, it costs seven. So seven 15. one way, eight the other way. Yeah. Okay. You will know that this is cheaper than you paid. I think the first time. You're starting okay, to get the hang of seven and negotiating eight. this this voyage. Fifteen. That brings us to. Uh, I ripped it. Oh god! I think I ripped the first hole in my character sheet. Oh, it's so mm. close. <laughs> So you book passage first thing the next morning. Okay. Uh, while you're at the docks, you do notice a familiar gnome by the name of I can't remember. Shit. Another we'll look it up another time if this matters. Um, oh, yeah. No, I don't remember him. Do you remember his name? It wasn't Granite. That was the other guy. It was... Oh, I have it written down. Bad DM does not keep track of his own NPCs. <laughs> nope, I didn't have it written down. Okay. Um, it may pop into my head in a minute or two. Maybe chat will remind me. Gareth. Gareth? No, no Gareth is the is a diviner. Yep. A I, presumably an apprentice to the arch diviner. The yep. man with many eyes. Yeah, actually, I think I didn't. I can't. Know. Okay, the guild hired you to escort him here. You right, right, but down. I don't think I actually ever got his name. I think he told me. Oh, Boris Rockshaper. Yeah, that's it. That is it. Yeah. Boris Rockshaper. He is down by the docks, uh, negotiating with some merchant over something or another. Boris. You, you do recognize yeah, him. Yeah, I go up to him and say, "Ah, uh, yes, Qualnir. Did you? So good to see you. I have no idea what you're doing here, but did you do it well? Hmm. Oh, just picking up some supplies for for things, for things, what is supplies it you, for things. What is it that you're doing here? Like the merchant behind me. So that'll be 500 board feet. I, I don't know how you measure lumber, but, right. <laughs> but it makes it clear that he's negotiating for building supplies. What you building? Uh, he sort of puts his hand, it would be on, uh, I guess on your shoulder. So he puts his hand straight up in the air and leads you away from the merchant. Okay, I walk away for a little bit. Oh, it's the most magnificent hideaway you've ever seen. Really? Yeah, it's got a got a three-boat garage and you know, you... all sorts of secret passages and hidden doors. That sounds Ooh. great. Are you building it here in Cinturon? Shh. Building what? Where? <laughs> is it is it gonna be here in Centeron? I whisper to him. Ah, uh, no. Where is it? I'll give you a hint. Up river. North. You fucking little gnome! You tell me where you're building this right now. <laughs> fucking. He's you. sort of dancing in circles around you giddy with excitement i look to michelle like i i can't i can't put up with this shit and find out find out what the fuck he's doing i just uh, and i yeah. walk off and she so, comes over and tries to well i mean you've got the evening you know, at you. so the three of you grab drinks um he's as slimy as he was portrayed just there uh, michelle i mean you get a few drinks in him that I, michelle will buy details out of him and charm yeah, uh, the most you're able to piece together is there is he's been contracted to build some sort of guild hideaway North of Cinturon. Okay. Uh, there's boats, so probably on the on the waterfront somewhere north of Cinturon. You're not sure how far, but you can make educa an educated guess, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And at some point he realizes, oh shit, I was supposed to be get it. And he runs off to go get his supplies and do whatever business okay. he was doing before you bumped into him. All right. Michelle recaps her insights, which I just recapped for you. And I'm thinking about going against the Goldsmiths Union. Mm. You go against the Union? Is that really a wise move? No, it's not a wise move. But Qualnir has <laughs> Qualnir <wisdom>. wise. <laughs> but then he thinks of Dena. Cunning, but he is not wise. Then he thinks of Dena, and if he goes against them, there's no way he can get Dena to join sides. She basically runs the Goldsmiths League Union thingy, and if then 
then he'll just never be able to see her again. There'll be enemies, and that's no good. But then maybe they could be star-crossed enemies, you know? <laughs> and then Qualner just kind of daydreams about Denna and fighting the right. Goldsmiths Union. and Show up a silver to rent a cabana for the night. I pay in copper. Screw these locals. <laughs> they they probably prefer copper, actually. Well, then I play in I mean, platinum. Must... Screw these locals. <laughs> really? No. They, they won't make change for platinum. They mostly actually barter for trading goods and services, but... Here's take... my goods and services. It's coin. It's the representation of all hard work. Each one of these represents X, man... X hours of manpower and should be the measure of a man's worth. The more wealth you have, the more manpower you have at your side. Really, wealth is the only form of status that really should exist. It's a <laughs> source of power, status, and, and virility. Philosophy of Qualnir. Well, out here on the fringes of civilization, that is not true. A well-balanced club is worth more than a fistful of gold coins any day. All right. But if you pay with coin, they'll take it. I pay with <laughs> coin. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, next morning you hop on a boat, on a ship... And head back. Um, yeah, well, shit. I've been rolling these checks every time you pass through Cintron, so it's been like three times today. But as you're pulling out on your boat, you're hanging out on the deck, um, you notice it looks pretty similar to that lizard man vessel you saw before, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit bigger. Um, you come into view, and most of the crew are lizard men. You notice one or two humans, and at the, at the wheel is Denna pulling into port as you're pulling out of port. She has uh, a lizard man longship um, with you know, probably 50 oars pulled by hired lizard men. Good to know that she's, she's still alive. She's, she's come screaming into Cinturon past you. All right. I try not to. I, I she, do not. She does not. No, she doesn't attention. notice you unless you. Okay. Yeah. Go no, no, no. I, I do not. <laughs> But she's clearly no longer aboard the icebreaker. Yeah. What a shame. Um, what was the was the jungler a ship that you were on? Yes. Is that what she named this ship, or did no? Or is that another ship that you that was a different on? ship? That was a ship. That was the ship you took, took to Cintron. Okay. Yeah. You do not catch a glimpse of what her ship's name is, but we can come up with it if you need it at a future date. Um, so you have a few days aboard this galley to Solstice. Um, on the way out of port, you do circle south around that point and past the Siren's Isle. Uh, Michelle is very intrigued by the Siren's song, and she suggests crazy notions of going to see what creature could possibly make such a beautiful, beautiful song. I shake my head and tell her the legends of the Sirens. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you it doesn't... No. Quell her curiosity. She is. She would. Yeah. Which she one of these is the Sirens Isle? Uh, so these brown spots are villages. This uh, this abandoned isle here is the one that emanates that radiates. Oh, can you ping it again? Because I didn't have the map up. For yeah. Them. This one here. Echoing from. From that like enclosed valley within within that rock. Is the haunting sound of a of a solo woman okay i've made a mental mm -hmm. uh, note on my character sheet loot the sirens mm -hmm. maybe we'll come back here and kill some sirens mm -hmm. that probably wasn't that did not come across as haunting as a single siren singing would but you add the jungle music that's in the background right now and it works yeah it was well. beautiful it was pretty good Okay. Uh, Michelle is Michelle is intrigued by this woman, and puts a note in your quest log. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you, yeah, you're maybe when I'm more powerful. Um. So in these several days, do you have anything you wish to accomplish? Um. No. No. Michelle and I just talk back and forth in hushed tones about the property we wish to buy. Like, should we buy it? on the harbor, inland a little bit, where, you know, all these things. And I think 
the decision that we come to is that we will have to probably check out what available property there is. But I would like something that is near this this area up here on the the top left. Uh, near the diviner's tower. <laughs> yeah, well, near where the staircase goes up. How steep of a cliff is that before the water falls down? Um, it's a pretty sheer cliff. But how deep is it? Or sorry, how tall is the cliff? Um, That's what I meant. You're not there yet, but okay. if you recall, I mean, it was jumpable, diveable, but oh. not like a diamond of the tens of feet. Okay. So now that you're a proficient swimmer, you you reckon you could dive off off of the cliff before you may have, you know, a belly flop could be pretty lethal. Okay. Hmm. So, I mean, we can think about, this seems like a, some questions for next session or for you to daydream about over the next week. Well, here's what I want is I want to be able to build a building and then dig a tunnel down and out uh, near the cliff so I can have like a secret exit on the ocean that I could like pull up ships to and hop on and hop off and disappear without having showing above or like maybe have like a little rowboat that gets pushed out through some secret entrance thing. That's what I'm looking for. So, uh, what? There's enough cliff there that something like that could be accomplished. Okay. Yeah. But then, how to hide it? How do you hide a secret entrance like that? You could even get property outside of town. Michelle suggests, although she likes the city. I like the city too. I want to stay inside town. Yeah. Inside the walls. Well. Um, is there anything you want to do? I mean, I guess we can end the session here, and if you have yeah. come up with something you want to do in the next few days, you can tell me what it is. Otherwise, we can just I mean, you make it safely to Solstice. Yeah, let's just end here. Yeah. We already did experience, so I think we're done, unless you got anything you need to do to wrap up. No, we're done, man. Thank you guys for watching Dicing with Death. Um, love it. Love yeah. Death. Um, yeah. We also have the possibility. Now, we, I've mentioned this to you once before off stream, but if I know we've been playing Squalnir for a long time, and we're kind of setting up like a base of operations, which will take some time. If you want, we could put Squalnir on hold and uh, run a campaign for you, but I know you got a honor bound, so you don't necessarily need that player fix. I don't necessarily need the fix, but okay. it's an idea. We can we'll, we'll we can see it would it. be yeah, it would be a change of precedent if we are to re not retire but shelf a character without killing it. Yeah. <laughs> but if we I mean we could certainly do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just it's an option. I'm very happy yeah. to keep playing Qualnir though. I I Yeah, but we're coming to the point where you I mean you're daydreaming about buying real estate, so it's mm -hmm. the campaign is switching gears. Um, so we can, I mean, we can see how the viewers feel, see how, see how we feel, but that's an idea. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for watching guys. Yeah. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, this is over Wibu for chat, now. Best chat. Uh, hobgoblin chat. Second best chat is what everyone keeps chanting. Uh, with hobgoblin, ch hobgoblin chat, worst chat. What are you talking about? No, there's, people love Hobgoblin chat. I don't go there often myself. But... I don't either. I, I set up my mods and they can they can, they can can delegate justice. Oh, God. <laughs> delegate justice. I'm probably already banned in Hobgoblin chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, stick around because on Friday, well, not stick around tonight. There's no more stream tonight. But on Friday, we've got Honorbound. Yep, special Friday broadcast. Same time, noon Pacific, and on, but on Friday. There's no misclicks, but on Saturday, or not on Saturday, on Monday is uh, Solemn. So yeah, that, that's our next D&D &D show. Lots of D&D &D to continue. God, so much D&D, &D, I love it. M more D&D, &D, better D&D &D now that this competition is over. Yeah. All right, guys. So, keep on watching. Take care, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Thanks to all the new subs that we got, too.